Well, that was news. And oh, here's some more of that thing. News. The President of the United States wants to shoot migrants at the border. Whoa! Wah. God, what? Hold on, who wrote this divisive, inflammatory nonsense? Okay. The President definitely wants to shoot migrants at the border. He might not do it, but he wants to. But he might not. But he might. Because he wants to. All right. Enough fooling around. Like, this is a news show. All right, let's change the title of the video. All right, the president doesn't want to shoot people at the border. Can we be serious, please? Gosh. Thank you. The president, Donald Trump, doesn't want to shoot migrants at the border. He wants other people to shoot them for him. But who will it be? The military? The police? Some other group of people? Only time will tell, but he definitely wants it to happen. Now, there are a lot of ways this could be illustrated. For example, I could simply read something that the president has said. For example, the president has said, in response to a manufactured border crisis, that he's going to have to call up more military, even though they can't act like a military would act because if they got a little rough, everybody would go crazy, lamenting that they have all these horrible laws that the Democrats won't change and they will not change them. You know, if only, if, only, if only there weren't laws to stop the military from being unnecessarily rough or cruel, you know, like, like I want them to do military stuff at the border. But if they did, people would be mad about it. I'd do it, but everyone would go nuts, but I'd do it. But the laws, but it would be good. You know, I, I could just point to the president literally saying out loud with vibrations from his throat and tongue that he's not going to shoot immigrants, but shooting immigrants would be very effective. End of quote. I won't, but I could, and it would work, but I won't. But who, boy, wouldn't that be effective, but I won't. Because people would freak out, so I won't. But I could do that, but I won't, but I could. And, um, I could just mention those quotes and probably just like roll the credits and be like, well, that's weird. It's real weird that he talks like that and says stuff like that more than a couple of times. It's weird. It really seems like the president wants to shoot migrants at the border. Roll credits. But here at Cody's Shoddy, we also like to ramble on for a long time. Because I would be remiss if I didn't talk about how Donald Trump has promoted violence against transgressors at his rallies, or his general desire for extreme measures or unnecessary violence, like wanting to execute drug dealers, or wanting police to be rougher with suspects, or like wanting to take out terrorists. S families. When asked about the military maybe refusing to do this cool idea, Trump said in a debate, they won't refuse, they're not gonna refuse me, believe me. If I say do it, they're going to do it. He, of course, rolled back on this, like most f***ed up things that pop out of the president's gullet. Quote, it is clear that as president, I will be bound by laws, just like all Americans, and I will meet those responsibilities. Laws, he might say, like, all these horrible laws that the Democrats won't change, and they will not change them. Laws that stop the military from shooting migrants at the border. So it just... It just seems like the president has an authoritarian, aggressive, careless view of the military's role and his ability and desire to tell them what to do. Just recently, he told Border Patrol agents that, quote, if judges give you trouble, say, sorry, judge, I can't do it. This just in, that's illegal. So maybe it's hard for him to get the military to shoot people at the border for him, something he wants them to do. Maybe there's someone else who could do it, like, like if there was a quote of the president bragging about how supportive and violent his supporters are, the military, the police, and uh, oh, fun, private citizens. I can tell you I have the support of the police, the support of the military, the support of the bikers for Trump. I have the tough people, but they don't play it tough until they go to a certain point, and then it would be very bad, very bad.
And even more fun, here's some more news. The leader of a far-right conspiracy-obsessed militia has been arrested after footage showed them illegally detaining migrants at gunpoint. The FBI, of course, knew about this man and his militia for a long time. He had three prior felony convictions, one including impersonating a peace officer. But they did nothing about it until videos went viral of them detaining migrants at gunpoint. So, good job. Now, I'm not saying President Trump supports this group. Though it's odd that he has yet to say anything about it, and it's odd that he seems to revel in what he thinks his supporters are capable of. And I won't get into it too deeply, but there's actually a long and detailed history of far-right militias patrolling the border. The U.S. Border Patrol was initially started to appease racist militias. The patrol itself and these militias have a history of severe brutality and torture of border crossers for reasons. Maybe using it as an excuse to exercise their cruelty and racism? Maybe they still do that? Though some, I assume, are good people. Anyway, perhaps the most well-known example of these militias is the Minutemen, who came to prominence around 2005. They feared terrorists coming across the southern border, something the president mentions with no evidence. They think they're a bunch of murderers and rapists, something the president said on the first day of his candidacy. They think that we're being invaded, something the president regularly says we're being. And despite saying in public that they're peaceful and only bring guns to defend themselves from the rapists and murderers, they've said other times... I think they should be shot on sight. Which, to be fair, the president has not said out loud. But to be balanced, he has acknowledged out loud how effective shooting immigrants would be. Also, side note, one of the founders of the Minutemen is a convicted pedophile, and another prominent member was convicted of murdering a little Hispanic girl and her Hispanic father for looking like drug dealers. The other founder isn't a pedophile or a murderer, he just gets cute little letters from Steve King, seen here giving a speech to the Minutemen. But more on King later, and enough about these militias. They're not the president. It's unfair to say that he thinks everything they think. But it's unbalanced to not point out how similar the things they say and fear are. It's unbalanced to not point out that the President of the United States constantly gins up fear about a, quote, invasion, to the point that militias hear him and arm up and go down to the border, specifically to defend against an invasion. And the President didn't say, wait, don't do that. That's not your job. In fact, it's dangerous for you to do that. Weird omission from the President. And I would say, in general, it's odd how reticent the president is to address any of this, or to renounce racists, or to generally be aware of the effects of his words. I'm not saying he loves and supports these people, it's just, it's just odd. Like, I could bring up David Duke, I won't, but I could, and how this ghostly former magic boy of the KKK vocally supports the president's nationalism, and Mr. Duke himself started a militia to patrol the border back in the 70s, and he really supported the president, but when the president was asked about it, he was like, I don't even know who that is, or what he's about, or what, you know, I, I don't know. And then the president was prodded about it, and he was like, ah. I don't know. I don't know anything about David Duke. In fact, I'm aggravated that you're asking me about it. Except, he also talked about David Duke in 1991 and how f***ed up it was that 54% of white people voted for him in Louisiana. And then he talked about him again in 2000 when he was considering running for president. Said out loud with words from his face of the Reform Party, quote, Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot. A racist. A problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. Interesting. He also wrote down on paper, also with words, quote, The Reform Party now includes a Klansman, Mr. Duke, a neo-Nazi, Mr. Pat Buchanan, and a communist, Miss Lenora Fulani. This is not company I wish to keep. And that's just, this is weird. But to be fair, the president did eventually condemn the endorsement of a wildly racist man who he pretended not to know for far too long. I disavowed him, I disavowed the KKK, I just did the Today Show and it was the same thing, and I said, how many times do I have to disavow? Do you want me to do it again for the 12th time? Well, I strong words from a strong man. But enough about someone the president very forcefully denounced. Who does he support? Well, one of his first pardons was of Joe Arpaio, famous for his tent city jail, comma, the cruelty of. This is maybe relevant considering we're detaining so many people and separating them from their children, and we have politicians on TV suggesting we concentrate these migrants in camps. But not like, not work camps, or bad camps, or concentration camps. They're, they're live camps for the nice people to live. 
Arpaio, of course, pardoned by the current president, is on camera referring to his camp as a concentration camp. My dad told me that if I didn't improve at school, he was going to send me to a concentration camp. Um, I got my concentration real quick. <laughs> I already have a concentration camp. Very cool. Good, uh, pardon. We got a quick word from the Minutemen on what we should do with migrants. We need to start putting them in uh, work camps. All right. Interesting to note that back in 2005, when the Minutemen were gaining traction, a private vigilante detained a family of immigrants, and in response, Joe Arpaio said, You don't go around pulling guns on people. Being illegal is not a serious crime. Joe said that. Of course, the Republican base in his town overwhelmingly supported the vigilante, and Joe realized that, and then, well, here we are. <laughs> But a pardon doesn't mean they agree on everything. You know, maybe the vigilante-loving, immigrant-hating, concentration camp-owning, prisoner-killing sheriff got a pardon because of other reasons. It just seems, at best, highly irresponsible of the president to not be aware of all of these problems or the signals he's sending and the things he is not addressing. There's a forgiveness and a normalization here that can't be ignored. A pride in the violence and loyalty he yields that shouldn't be ignored. A campaign of dehumanization that is depressingly apparent. He calls some people animals, but he really, he means MS-13 despite not specifying that. And he constantly talks about the invasion, something armies usually do. And he has a baffling support of Steve King, seen here building a prototype of the president's dumb as f wall idea, in which he says electrifying it is okay because we do it in zoos. Zoos, of course, contain um, animals. King, in the president's own words, is so ideologically similar to him that they don't even need to compare notes. So, we won't. King and the president, and even trucker carburetor, regularly talk about immigrants being dirty from shitholes, making America dirty, in some cases calling them dirt, and we have a right to defend our borders from invasions. All of these people and statements are beloved by white nationalists, by the way, because of course they are. Something King has actually lamented we can't call ourselves anymore. King thinks spotting immigrants is a sixth sense that's based on what someone looks like, or is dressed like, or has the accent like. Maybe the sentiment is why we see so many viral videos of dumb pieces of shit trying to detain citizens because they talk funny, or look too brown, or because they're wearing a shirt of the flag of Puerto Rico, a U.S. territory. Maybe the president talking about how Mexico is sending their rapists and murderers, and now Central and South American governments are sending their rapists and murderers, and they're mostly animals, and some are good, but it's a crisis, an invasion. Maybe this is all encouraging a racist whack job gun havers to do dangerous things. And if the president doesn't want people shot at the border, he could address it, or at least pretend to be aware of it. Because it's it's weird that he pretended to know nothing about a racist he knew about and then begrudgingly condemned. It's weird that he pretends to know nothing about the white nationalist congressman, who he also claims is his ideological twin, but you know, I, I, I can't comment on it. I, I just I haven't looked into it recently. I, I, I've not, I, I just don't know enough about it. I'm the president. And it's weird that he's dismantling programs to combat white nationalist violence. It's weird that after a dumb killed a bunch of Muslims in a mosque in New Zealand due to an existential fear of a migrant invasion, the president said on that day that white nationalism isn't a problem. He doesn't really know anything about it. It's just a few people. And then mere hours later, talked about the coming migrant invasion. And then he complains about how people don't want him to talk about an invasion. People hate the word invasion, but that's what it is. It's just a little weird, is all. And maybe the president doesn't want to shoot migrants at the border or want other people to do it for him. Maybe he just wishes he could want to shoot migrants at the border. Because here's some more news. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, seen here listening to the president describe what her department is doing to migrants and their children at the border. Ah yes, pride. Maybe because they separated many kids from their families and lost a lot of them and said they needed two years to find them and, you know, probably will never find them. But anyway, after presiding over an aggressive and some would say cruel campaign to deter asylum seekers from coming to the United States, implementing a purposeful policy of family separation as that deterrent, claiming there was no family separation policy despite other times referring to that policy, well, she recently resigned because she believed the situation was becoming untenable with the president, becoming increasingly unhinged about the border crisis, and making unreasonable and even impossible requests. 
she's just not tough enough, you know? Like the military, or bikers for Trump. And speaking of unreasonable or even impossible requests regarding border security, one of the few things that briefly got Nielsen back into the president's good graces, if the president is even capable of grace, was when she allowed the use of tear gas on migrants at the border. Tear gas, of course, is banned internationally during war times and is considered a war crime, but luckily it's okay to use domestically. So let's hear it for that. Hip hip. Boo. Before this tear gas use, the president can be heard saying that the military would consider a rock the same thing as a firearm because, quote, there's not much difference when you get hit in the face with a rock, citation desperately needed. He, of course, walked this back soon after saying, I didn't say shoot, but they do that with us. They are going to be arrested for a long time. Now, first of all, arrested for a long time? Do we have a reenactment of someone being arrested for a long time? But furthermore, Italy of all, to be even more fair, his rock quote is often taken out of context. Fake news! Before saying rocks are like guns and the military will treat them as such, he was asked if he envisions the U.S. military firing at migrants at the border. And Trump said, I hope not. And you know what? I agree. I also hope that the president doesn't envision the military firing at migrants at the border. And since we're being fair, TMCR, we might as well also be and balanced, TMCR, and once again point out that he was finally happy that the Secretary of Homeland Security used tear gas and then she resigned because she wouldn't go as far as he wanted her to, and has recently been heard saying he isn't going to, quote, shoot immigrants, but shooting immigrants would be very effective, and has even more recently been heard complaining that the military can't act like a military in regards to the invasion, because if they got a little rough, people would be upset, and we, we got those damn horrible laws stopping the military from acting rough, you know, like, like the military at the border against the invasion. But he won't shoot them, but he could, and it would work. But he won't, but it would work, and we could, but I won't. The laws won't let us, but it would work if, if, we, if we did it, but, but, we're not gonna. but I'm going to bring it up a lot. But I won't do it. But I will bring it up a lot. But I won't, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it. You know, people would be upset. It would trigger the libs. So let's do it! <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching to the end of the video if you did, and make sure to like and subscribe and check out our patreon.com slash some more news to support us. We have a podcast called Even More News. You can, you can uh, like and subscribe and like and subscribe.